Thanks for joining us for the Purdue University CME Group Ag Economy Barometer Survey results from the May 2024 survey. I'm Jim Minter, Director of the Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture. I'm going to share with you the highlights of this month's survey. The Ag Economy Barometer Index rose nine points to a reading of 108 this month. That leaves the index up five points compared to last May and nine points higher than it was two years ago. The rise in the index this month was really attributable to an improvement in the Future Expectation Index, which rose 11 points compared to April and left it 19 points higher than it was in May of 2023. The Current Condition Index rose 6 points compared to last month, but it was still well below May of 2023, actually 27 points below May of 2023. The Farm Financial Performance Index was up 6 points compared to April and also six points higher than it was a year ago. When we asked producers again what their biggest concerns are for the upcoming year, they continue to point to high input cost as their number one concern, followed by lower output prices, and finally by interest rates as a big concern going forward. The Farm Capital Investment Index rose four points compared to a month ago, but was two points lower than this time last year. When we asked producers who said it's a bad time to make large investments in their farming operation, why they feel that way, there was a bit of a change. More producers this month said that they were concerned about interest rates compared to recent months. When we asked producers who said it's a good time to make large investments in their farming operation, why they felt that way, there's been a significant shift over the last several months with more and more producers pointing to the rise in farm machinery dealer inventories as a reason to make investments in their farming operation. The short-term farmland value expectation index was up three points compared to a month ago, and that left that index up five points compared to a year earlier. When we looked at the raw responses to the question that index is based on, the percentage of producers who expect values to rise did not change this month, but fewer producers said they expect to see values decline in the upcoming 12 months. The long-term farmland value expectation index, which is based on a question that asks producers what they think is going to happen to farmland values over the next five years, was nearly a record high this month, a reading of 159, which was three points higher than a month ago, and also leaves that index, I think, 14 points higher than it was this time last year. Again, looking at the raw responses to the questions that question that index is based on, the percentage of producers who said they expect farmland values to rise rose to 69%, which is an all-time high for that response to that question. When we followed up and asked producers who think farmland values are going to rise over the next five years why they feel that way, some producers are starting to point to the impact of solar and wind leases on farmland values as a reason for their optimism. This month, 12% uh, of the respondents in the survey pointed to that as a significant reason why they thought farmland values were likely to rise. That corresponds with the percentage of producers who said they've had some discussions with companies about the possibility of leasing farmland for solar energy production. This month, 20% of the producers in the survey said they'd engaged in some discussions. That was up slightly compared to last month when it was 19%, and up significantly compared to, for example, February and March when only 10 to 12% of the producers said they were engaged in some discussions. When we followed up and asked producers who had engaged in some discussions about solar leasing, what kind of rates they were being offered for solar leasing of farmland, 55% of them said they were offered a rate of over $1,000 per acre, and 27% of them said they were offered a rate of $1,250 per acre or more. That wraps up our discussion for this month's Ag Economy Barometer Survey. You can get the full report on our website, which is purdue.edu slash agbarometer. And you can also get some more details on the podcast, which is Purdue Commercial Agcast, available on major podcast providers as well as on our website. On behalf of the Center for Commercial Agriculture, I'm Jim Mintert. Thanks for joining us.